the intro song that I did for the uh, for that episode was the song that they uh, that they used for the Russ Martin show, the entr- the theme song that they gotcha. played at the beginning of the show for that. Um, and uh, a couple people know this, but probably most of the people that listen to this don't know who that is or what that is. Uh, Russ Martin was a radio talk show host in the Dallas area for uh, many. I mean, he was he he started in the eighties. Mm-hmm. Um, and had been around for a long, 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 long time. On you know, hopped around in a couple different stations, and um, so he kind of became the. Uh, a lot of people, in, you know, kind of called him like the redneck Howard Stern. He was kind of like the shock jock guy, especially yeah. into like the early two thousands. Um, he kind of became the shock jock, say things, you know, uh, call women fat bitches, and you know, just you know uh, that kind of pushing people's buttons. Yeah, push pushing the buttons, absolutely. And he was like the number one talk show host for many, 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 many years in uh, the the Dallas area. And then he uh, had some issues, kind of trailed off, and you know was was still active, but not as um, not as big as he once was. And there's lots of reasons for that. One, just you know, society kind of changes, I think, a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't think that he really kept up with that. Um, Kind of yeah, living, stick, even kinda, in the, exactly. It kind of played well. out, you know. Yeah, um, that's a better way to put it. Yeah, well, and it and it didn't age well. Just in the, you know, you were talking about wanting to bang chicks and bang the the new sales chick in the office or whatever. You can't really say that, man. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, not that I think that it was cool to say that in the early two thousands, but you could definitely get away with that more in the early two thousands. Uh, but there's also I don't know how much you know about this, but they changed the way that radio ratings were calculated um, right. in the mid 2000s and this affected not just Russ Martin there's a, you can read all kinds of articles and stuff about how this affected a lot of people that were like the big number one guy in these these uh, uh, metropolitan areas and these different mm-hmm. uh, radio markets because um, it used to be it was all just done by survey and you would write down a little book what you were listening to yeah and so what would happen was you would have this big popular guy and his um, billboards are everywhere. Whenever you're listening at any time of the day on that radio station, they're saying, this is the home of Russ Martin. And you just hear it over and over and over and over. And it just gets in your head. And even if you listen to maybe Russ Martin for, you know, 10, 15 minutes on your way home from work or whatever like that, whenever mm-hmm. you're filling out the survey, you know, you, you just heard Russ Martin all day. It's what comes so to you're mind. writing down, oh, I was, I listened to the whole four hours today and you're writing that down all day, yeah. every day. So he came really big, but I don't think that the numbers were truly accurate of the number of people that were listening. Of yeah, absolutely. So whenever they transitioned to, um, they would g- used to give you a little monitor. I think that's how they still do it, honestly. For the like Nelson ratings, yeah. Yeah, so they give you this little this little monitor um, about the size of a pager, and you put it on you, and it picks up what you're listening to. So only if you're truly listening to it are they are you getting credit for it and so whenever they introduced that yes. his ratings really went down they they dipped a lot because i think it was just overly inflated but anyways so he was a really big part of me growing up i listened to him mm-hmm. as as a teenager and as being you know the raunchy teenager like i love that he would talk about you know farting and all, all that kind of stuff <laughs> um that i just thought was so funny and i learned about you know sexual stuff on there like all kinds of stuff like it was perfectly made for a teenage boy that show right so I, I listened to a lot of that as a teenager going through high school and stuff and just kind of you know hooked on to that and still listened even when he wasn't quite as popular it's to listen he had some health issues and he passed away earlier this year well yeah. it finally came out uh how he passed away they were kind of secretive about how he passed away they weren't saying um what it was oh and uh it came out this week that he died from chronic alcoholism and oh. um and he was only 60 years old that, and yeah i remember like that was also part of his shtick was he would drink on the air that yeah. was part mm-hmm. of part of his shtick is hey while you're you know you, you get live this you know terrible life and you're on your way home from the from the office or whatever you have a shitty job or whatever my job is i get to sit here and drink and laugh around with my pals and he would kind of like rub that in your face a little bit and yeah uh one of the billboards that he had said uh i'll drink you drive you know because he would have the right you know, coming I, rem- home from I remember work. that yeah so i mean that that was a big part of his shtick was 
was drinking. And even um, like whenever they had a, a tribute for him, like the day after he died, the tribute mm-hmm. was a toast where you were supposed to drink out of your own whiskey bottle, like that, and like a lot of what he what he was known for was like that drinking, and that's what ended up his identity killing him. And it's uh, kind of scary. I, I mean, I've considered a role model and part of like what we're doing right here is sitting here and talking in front of a microphone as something that I've wanted to do based on what I listened to from Russ Martin. And sometimes yeah. the um, drinking whiskey by itself out of the bottle is something that I heard Russ Martin do. And I was like, that's badass. That's cool. I'm going to do that. And like, there's a lot of stuff and to see how that ended for him. I don't know, man, just to think, to, to, to die from that. You don't think that that's something that can happen, but it happens every day to many, many, many people. I just, uh, you know, rest in peace, Russ Martin, but I don't want to end like that, man. I don't. No. Um, and like you said, I do think that it's, you know, I'm thankful that I am thinking about those things now and, and really kind of, you know, swallowing that pill of that's what that, you know, that fun life that it sounded like he had, was it that fun? I don't, you know, I don't know. Like, um, I don't know if it was, so I got to find my own happiness somewhere else. And it's not going to be, you know, at the, at the, at, at the bottom of a Jack Daniels bottle. No, you know, I think as fun as he made balance. it sound, you know, like right. he made it sound a lot of fun. He sold and you look on it. Where, look where it happened. Look where he is. Yeah. Yeah. So, with all that being said, rest in peace, Russ <laughs> Martin. Um, yes. I, I, there's a lot of there's a lot of good things you know that came from you know my. One of the best things it. I think is the Steve that I got to know today. We wouldn't have I think this personality and stuff without part of it, that. Yeah, so, you know, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you, you know, know absolutely. It was a big part of my life in my formative years. You know, 